that's what it is. Okay. So start at 10, 25, right? Okay. 10, 20, okay. All right, sounds good. Thank you. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Hi, um, my name is, uh, oh, it started with open discussion here. Okay. Hi, my name is uh, Raj Kapoor. I represent um, AMD. Um, I'm the chief firmware architect. Um, for AMD, responsible for all things firmware and strategies around it. Um, today we're gonna talk about a little bit on um, uh, what we call as OpenSill and how it came about um, as a solution to a problem statement. Um, the problem statement uh, existed for a long time um, it wasn't recognized until very recently. Um, we, we had a product, a silicon initialization product called Agisa, and uh, the Agisa firmware was written specifically for uh, interfacing with the UEFI firmware. So it had a lot of UEFI isms in there, and we could not, essentially we could not scale it to other host firmwares. So um, we, we tried to, um, when, we, when AMD uh, you know, got some projects to do with uh, Chrome OS, uh, we, we tried to convert Agisa, um, change the facets there, and try to marry it with, um, actually, change Agisa into Intel FSP and then integrate with, with Core Boot. Uh, that was a huge Herculean effort and definitely not scalable. So we sustained that for a few years uh, until we realized that we need to do something about it because it's very resource intensive, takes a long time to convert Agisa into Intel FSP and then integrate with Core Boot. So uh, we decided that we needed a scalable solution uh, that could scale from uh, not just UEFI, which is a very rich um, interface or uh, feature set, um, uh, to a very nimble uh, host firmware. So uh, we, we came up with a solution which was very simple. Uh, our, our minds were set with, you know, from a simplicity uh, perspective to be very, very simple from an interface perspective and to be able to very seamlessly scale from one host firmware to the other. So uh, this slide basically, uh, you know, talks about the problem statement, you know, why uh, it, it was, Agisa was a great solution for UEFI at the time. But, uh, you know, of course, um, it, we ran into these challenges. So the solution uh, requirements were, um, it has to be an extensible architecture. Um, what, what that means is that uh, it needs to be very lightweight. It, it needs to allow for lightweight implementation, which means firmware needs to 
get into the boot path, get out of it very quickly. And it needs to scale to the, on the other side of the spectrum as well, where you can implement a barrage of feature sets and make it feature rich for associated host firmwares like UEFI and everything in between. So UEFI on one end, core boot on one end, and everything in between. So that's what uh, we, um, uh, we sort of as, you know, the, from an extensibility perspective. Um, we also uh, wanted to make sure that it is simple and secure as well. Uh, so the moment, the moment you make your silicon initialization firmware get into the boot path and get out of there very quickly, uh, your, your uh, ability to um, make the platform very secure goes up considerably because it has a very small uh, surface of attack, right? And, uh, and then, of course, agnostic and scalability as well. So agnostic meaning uh, we don't care if you want to pair it with core boot or any other host firmwares all the way to UEFI. So these were the four tenets based on which we uh, proceeded with looking into solution spaces. So uh, we, we came up with something called as OpenSIL. Uh, it stands for Open Source Silicon Initialization Libraries. So it's a, it's a very simple three library solution. Uh, library one, which we call as XM, uh, stands for Silicon Initialization Module. Uh, the second is XPRF, which is Platform Reference Firmware. Um, when we developed it for uh, AMD CRB platforms. And um, uh, the, 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 uh, did I, okay. And the, uh, and the third one is XUSL or um, um, uh, services library. Now the services library is not exposed to the host firmware, rather uh, it is exposed only to the internal two libraries. Uh, provide sort of a hardware abstraction interface to those libraries. So um, uh, very lightweight, uh, low chirp, uh, low chirp meaning um, uh, fewer than uh, the ones that are required to interface with the host firmware to initialize the silicon. And then once you do that, you know, the platform uh, reference firmware does the rest part of it. So, um, and of course, um, uh, if you see uh, it, scales to a barrage of um, host firmwares as well. Okay. Um, I, I talk about these uh, APIs here a little bit, but um, essentially there are some certain time points uh, during which we initialize the silicon. We allow the host firmwares to call into these APIs, very well-defined APIs, and these a APIs can be extended to just about any um, silicon hardware. Uh, not just AMD, uh, it has a potential to uh, be leveraged for other silicon as well, uh, other silicon vendors. Um, here are some of the APIs for uh, platform reference code. You know, what are the elements that go into platform uh, initialization? So essentially the PRF is initialization of the silicon based on your platform differences or your platform netlist, if you will. Okay. All right. Here's the uh, projected roadmap. So today we are at POC phase. Uh, POR, POR phase is four. The server is not until 2026. Uh, we have proven uh, the open cell and its, uh, uh, its feature set, you know, very, in, in very close parity with uh, Agisa firmware. And we've done that with the uh, Genoa platforms, uh, which is Epic 4 generation. Um, we do plan to open source uh, the Genoa POC, um, which is going to be soon released. And uh, same with Gen 5, uh, that is going to be POC as well. And uh, 2026 is when we make it a POR for uh, the Gen 6 um, Epic CPUs. Now, uh, since OCP is primarily focused on servers, um, I'm not showing that roadmap for the client. So if you remember, I talked about that. It needs to be, you know, scaling to both servers and client. This does that as well. So we do, we do plan to intercept all client and server platforms by 2026 timeframe. 
Um, here are all the, uh, the list of all uh, the partners that we collaborated with, and uh, two of the one notable uh, are here with us, um, Nine Elements and AMI. And without, uh, without an awesome help from them, we would have not been able to uh, do the demo today. And we would not have, it, have a product that we could showcase um, on Genoa platforms. So thank you very much, both of you guys. Um, this essentially talks about the OCP relevance from a scalability perspective, openness perspective, and sustainability. Um, so we, we do have demos uh, out there in the booth. I think our uh, booth number is A4, right? If I'm not mistaken, okay. And um, so uh, th there's a demo by AMD, there's a demo by Nine Elements, and then there's a demo by uh, AMI as well. Uh, we do showcase both uh, core boot as well as UEFI host firmwares. Um, uh, I think I did talk about most of these um, in prior slides, but yeah. Okay, um, uh, so like I said, uh, the three of us have uh, demos. Please check us out at A4, A3, and A15. Um, so nine elements, uh, they would be showcasing the core boot, um, uh, great partners, and awesome job there uh, for developing the solution <coughs> on uh, Genoa platforms. Um, uh, there's, there's ways to go uh, still. Um, uh, it, like I said, it's a POC, uh, but we are very close in parity with Agisa, so uh, that's a great thing. Uh, the next one is uh, the one from AMI. Uh, they do uh, showcase both uh, UEFI as well as core boot. Um, and um, uh, awesome uh, collaboration uh, and synergy from that team as well. Uh, like I said, both these guys couldn't have it done without you. Now, um, in addition to us open sourcing the open cell, um, I think I do have some time, right? Okay. So uh, in addition to open sourcing, uh, the specification, I do plan to make it uh, um, open as well and invite uh, all the silicon vendors. Uh, you see, from a customer perspective, it is much easier to switch from one silicon vendor to the other if the stack is fairly common, right, the firmware stack. Um, and if it is open, open source, it's make, it makes it even much more easier. So the, the, the thing that we proceeded with OpenSIL was right from the beginning was uh, we want to make the specification open. We want to make the code open. We want to team up with all the partners that we can gather and do open validation. And so, and everything in between. So, um, it really is an open system firmware, really is an open source firmware, really is an open architecture uh, firmware. Um, so, um, the call, into, to, to call to action is for if, if there is uh, any interest from the industry to make that happen, let's do it together. Make it easier for our customers to switch between silicon vendors. Uh, make it much more scalable, make it much more sustainable. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I think I have a little video clip here. There you are. Just a little snazzier without it. <laughs> yeah. So I'll, thank you. Um, I'll take uh, questions of Fanny. Yes, sir. Um, so, Raja, we just saw a presentation from Christian on, yes. but I ask a question on the level of abstraction being at the top of the core boot piece. Seems like this effort that you're trying to spearhead is to move that level of abstraction one level layer down to where that all of bootloaders, you know, BIOS, whatever, can have a common interface. Common interface, yeah. So that, that makes it much easier to that migrate, not only between silicon, Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I absolutely invite everybody, every silicon vendor, to partner with me on this. And I would imagine every bias vendor. <laughs> and every bias vendor. Yeah, absolutely. It's, see, the, the, you know, it's the, the whole thing about firmware 
There are lots of moving parts. There are lots of vendors. There are lots of silicon vendors. We need to work together. Make it easier for the customers. Make it easier for the world. Right. Any other questions? No, I'm not the only guy in the room that has questions. <laughs> no, they're, they're great question. Thank you. Werner, I thought you had some questions. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I didn't ask you whether you supported it or not. I asked, asked you if you had questions. <laughs> Yes. Um, do you feel that there are good chances that this, that this really will happen? Or is it, I mean, for now it's, it, it, it's sort of like. So uh, the client will happen, is that what your question is? Yeah. You bet. Okay. 2026. Okay. All products. Agisa will be end of life. Nice. Open cell will replace it. So I, I want to solve the problem for AMD, not just AMD, but for the industry as well. The industry is, I think it is ready. We've all recognized the, the value of open sourcing. I do want everybody to come together. Yeah. All right, if none, I think I can give you your five minutes back. Thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate it.